Hello everyone, I am Dr. Adarsh Deep, present here to discuss the second part of population interactions. In previous lecture, we have learned about the positive interactions or the relationships. Today, we are going to discuss about the negative population interactions. These include the relations or interactions between two species where members of either one or both the interacting species harmed or destroyed. It may be through the direct hunting or screening some toxins or by directly using the resources of the other species. So let us start one by one. The different types of the negative population interactions. As far as negative interactions are concerned, in these members of either one or both the interacting species are harmed. These are also called antagonism. So negative interactions can be defined as the interactions between the two species where members of either one or both the interacting species harmed or destroyed. Antagonism has been subdivided into three main types. Number one, competition. Number two, antibiosis and number three is exploitation. Exploitation is further divided into two types. One is predation and other is parasitism. So let us take one by one. First of all, competition. It is antagonistic interaction in which two or more members of same species or of two different species of same trophic level compete for common resources like light, moisture, nutrients, etc., which are in short supply in relation to number of the individuals. So we can define the competition as an interaction between organisms or species in which the fitness of one is lowered by the presence of another. It may be divided into intraspecific type and interspecific type. Intraspecific means between the individuals of same species and interspecific means between the individuals of two different species of the same trophic level. Competition is of two types on the basis of nature of struggle. One is direct or direct interference type. But competition is not always a straightforward interaction either. Then it is called as indirect or competitive resource use type. In direct interference type competition, members of two different populations are mutually and actively inhibitory to each other. And in case of indirect or the competition resource use type competition, each population inhibits the other indirectly for the resource in short supply. So first of all, intraspecific competition. This type of competition is an interaction in population ecology whereby members of the same species compete for limited resources. This leads to a reduction in fitness for both the individuals, but the most fit individual survives and is able to reproduce. By contrast, Interspecific competition occurs when members of the different species compete for a shared resources. As members of the same species have rather similar requirements for resources, whereas different species have a smaller contested resources overlap, resulting in the intraspecific competition generally being a stronger force than interspecific competition. Here you can see the direct competition between the male heartbeats, locking horns and fiercely defending their territories. So this is an example of direct competition. Again in this picture you can see the flamingo competing via interference competition potentially for the territories, mates or food. In case of indirect intraspecific competition, organisms can compete indirectly either via exploitative 
or apparent competition. Exploitative competition involves individuals depleting a shared resource and both suffering a loss in fitness as a result. The organisms may not actually come into the contact and only interact via a shared resource indirectly. For example, such as grizzly bear catching a salmon that can then no longer be eaten by the bears at different points along the river. Let us study some facts about the competition. First is the resource must be limited for competition to occur. Individuals can compete for food, water, space, light, meats or any other resource which is required for survival or reproduction. The resource must be limited for competition to occur. If every member of the species can obtain a sufficient amount of every resource, then individuals do not compete and the population grow exponentially. Prolonged exponential growth is rare in nature because resources are finite and so not every individual in a population can survive, leading to the intraspecific competition for the scarce resources. Second fact is direct intraspecific competition is the process by which individuals directly compete with one another in pursuit of a resource. It can involve fighting, stealing or ritualized combat. Direct intraspecific competition also includes animal claiming a territory which then excludes other animals from entering the area. Third is, in indirect interspecific competition, there may not be an actual conflict between the two competitors. But the animal excluded from the territory suffers a fitness loss due to a reduced foraging area and is unable to enter the area as it risks confrontation from a more dominant member of the population. As organisms are encountering each other during interference competition, they are able to evolve behavioral strategies and morphologies to outcompete rivals in their population. Thus, it is clear that intraspecific competition does not just involve direct interactions between the members of the same species such as male deer locking horns when competing for mates but can also include indirect interactions where an individual depletes a shared resource. Now second is interspecific competition. As you know this is the competition between individuals of different species. Under this competition type, we also recognize two categories of competition, but the interaction is between the individuals of different species and not the individuals of the same population, as is the case of intraspecific competition. So, first is direct interspecific competition. Crombie worked in 1947 on two beetle population. One is Tribolium confusum and other is Orisifilus surinamensis in a culture medium of wheat flour which is used as a food for beetles. It was observed that after some time Orisifilus population died out. It was no more because in this competition Tribolium ate more eggs of Orizophilus than the later ate the eggs of Tribolium. In an other experiment, Frank in 1957 demonstrated that in mixed cultures, Daphnia pulicaria causes the extinction of Daphna magna when food and oxygen become limited. So in this case, Daphnia magna vanished in the presence of Daphnia pulicaria. In these two examples, 
the competition is of direct interest specific competition type now second is indirect interest specific competition in this type each population inhibits the other indirectly for the resource in short supply it was proved by gauss in 1934 gf gauss a russian ecologist studied the competition between three closely related ciliatic protozoans paramecium caudatum paramecium bursaria and paramecium aurelia he found that when these protozoans were cultured separately then these showed the sigmoid population curve and reached an equilibrium level as these finally reached the plateau stage when birth rate and death rate became equal but when gauss grew paramecium aurelia and paramecium caudatum in the same bacterial culture then paramecium caudatum could not face the competition and after about 16 days it declined to the point of extinction and alone paramecium aurelia survived in this interspecific competition paramecium aurelia outcompeted paramecium caudatum not due to the release of certain toxins but due to its higher intrinsic growth rate so paramecium aurelia overpowered paramecium caudatum for the limited amount of food again when paramecium caudatum and paramecium bursaria were grown together gauss found that although two species were competing for the same resources but neither species suffered a decline to the point of extinction they coexisted but at stable densities much lower than when grown alone this showed that though these coexisting species were still in competition with one another but were spatially separated and feeding in the different parts paramecium caudatum feeding on bacteria suspended in the medium while paramecium bursaria feeding at the bottom of the medium so forming different trophic niches on the basis of these experiments gf gauss proposed competition exclusion principle which states that when two closely related species with similar requirements occur in same environment they use different food or become active at different periods or occupy different niches to avoid competition otherwise one of them will be eliminated as no two species can occupy exactly same ecological niche so the two species may have same habitat but not the same ecological niche it has been confirmed by both laboratory and field studies that no two species can occupy exactly same niche this exclusion principle was proved by several scientists as proved by the gauss on paramecium aurelia and paramecium caudatum O'Neill in 1967 showed that seven species of millipedes occupy the same general habitat forest floor of a maple oak forest in Illinois USA and belong to the same trophic level that is detritus feeder but occupy different microhabitats or niche and use the different energy resources in the same way Lack in 1945 studied the feeding behavior of two similar fish-eating birds of Britain, cormorant and shagfish. Though these birds feed in same waters and nest on the same cliffs, but detailed studies showed that their nest sites and food are different. Shag feeding in upper waters on free-living herring fish and eels. while 
cormorant being a bottom feeder of flatfish and bottom invertebrates like shrimps. Further, two species select slightly different kind of nesting sites though in proximity on the same cliff. One more example is given by the Darwin which is known as Darwin's finches. These finches are passerine birds found on the Galapagos Island. There are 14 species of birds which form about 40% of the bird species on Galapagos. Though these bird species are closely related and probably evolved from the same ancestor but exploit a diverse range of food type and habitats so have minor variations in their beak to avoid competition and exclusion. There are also a number of other examples which show that the niche of a species in the absence of competitions from other species is its fundamental niche which is a combination of conditions and resources which allow the species to maintain a viable population. But in the presence of competitions, the species is restricted to a realized niche, the nature of which is determined by the type of competing species present. Now let us see what is the significance of the competition. Competition determines the distribution of closely related species. In nature, the closely related species occupy usually different geographical areas or different habitats in same area or otherwise avoid competition in differing in their daily or seasonal activity or food. Therefore, competition helps in distribution of closely related species. Competition may result the conditions which could result in coexistence instead of the exclusion. It also determines habitat range of the species. When interspecific competition is more severe, then the habitat range become restricted. But when interspecific competition is less severe, then generally a wide habitat range is achieved. Competition also helps in segregation of the species into the different niches and finally the speciation. Next negative interaction is the antibiosis. Antibiosis is the type of association is characterized by the production of materials which are specifically harmful to the other species. So when two species present in the same habitat, one species produce toxins which is harmful to the other species. It is very common in lower organisms like fungi and bacteria and we use these antibiotics in the form of antibiotic. So fungi and some bacteria are the chief sources of antibiotics such as penicillin, streptomycin and oromycin. Some aquatic and land plants antagonize to the animal. It may be directly or indirectly. For example, blue-green algal bloom of microcystis produces toxic substance like hydroxylamine which cause death of the fishes and even of the cattle that drink water. Similar destructive causes are produced by the red tide microorganisms in the sea which prove fatal to the fishes. This may occur in plants also. A wild walnut tree is a good example of macro plant showing antibiosis. Roots of this walnut tree secrete some characteristic excutes which inhibits the growth of various other organisms including plants around it. So it will not allow plants of other species to grow near about it. The next negative interaction is predation. 
It is a kind of direct food relationship between two species of animals in which larger species called predator attacks, kills and feeds on the smaller species called prey. So predation is a type of antagonistic interspecific interaction in which predator population adversely affects the growth and survival of the smaller prey population. A predator kills and devours its prey, normally at one kill. Thus, the prey, the capital is lost forever. So, predators are carnivores and occupies the highest trophic level. The predation was experimentally proved by the Russian biologist G. F. Gauss in 1934 by reading a predator population, Didinium nostrum and its prey population paramecium caudatum which in turn thrive well on yeast and bacteria. Predators can be divided into two categories generalized predator and specialized predator. In case of generalized predators the prey is not specific that means the predator feeds on variety of food for example Nepenthes pitcher plant, Dionia the fly trap, Utricularia trap, Dorsera rotundifolia which is known as sundew plant. All these are insectivorous plants. So in this case prey is not of specific type. As far as specialized predator is concerned they feed on a particular type of prey. For example, Peel's falcon feeds only on ducks and pheasants. In the same way, Hydrophis prey upon fish eggs only. Lotka in 1925 and Voltera in 1926 worked out a mathematical formula regarding the predator prey relationship. As it is clear that predator adversely affects the growth of a prey population. So initially predator population increase and the prey population decreases. But this happened to the limit where the trends are reversed. Therefore oscillations are caused with the peak of the predator's oscillation lagging slightly behind the peak of the prey's oscillation. That means in the absence of predator, population of the prey increases. With the entry of predator, predator population increases and prey population decreases. When prey population decreases up to a limit, then there is a shortage of food for predator. So, predator population also decreases. With the decrease in the predator population, prey population increases again. In this way, these oscillations are formed as shown in graph where the peak of the predator's oscillation lagging slightly behind the peak of the prey's oscillation. This model makes several simplifying assumptions. First is the prey population will grow exponentially when the predator is absent. The predator population will starve in the absence of prey population. Predators can consume infinite quantities of prey and there is no environmental complexity. In other words, both populations are moving randomly through a homogeneous environment. As far as negative interactions are concerned in these members of the next negative interaction is parasitism. It is a type of antagonistic interspecific interaction in which smaller partner called parasite derives food and shelter from in or on the body of larger partner called host and inhibits the survival of the population. So here species A parasite is benefited and species B which is host 
is negatively affected or harmed. Parasitism is a case of weaker attacking the stronger and is found throughout the animal kingdom but is mostly found among the protozoans, flatworms, nematodes and arthropods. The parasite cannot survive in the absence of their host. Generally, parasites are much smaller than their host, show a high degree of specialization for their mode of life and reproduce more quickly and in greater numbers than their host. So, parasitism is an association between two types of organisms of different size and species. In this, parasite gets food or shelter or both from the host. The study of parasites is called parasitology. The Italian scientist Francisco Reddy, considered to be the father of modern parasitology, was the first to recognize and correctly describe the detail of many important parasites. Parasite exploits its host in various ways and by injury in various walks. Besides taking nourishment from its host, it enjoys shelter and free transportation also. It produces toxic substances and sometimes wounds also. These parasites are of different types. On the basis of host parasite period of relationship, parasitism is of two types. One is temporary or partial and other is permanent or holoparasite. In temporary or partial parasitism, the parasite spends most of their life cycle as free living organism and only a part of life cycle is spent as parasite. For example, Glochidium larvae and Xylostoma duodenale, some leeches, mosquitoes and flies are called intermittent parasites. In case of permanent or holoparasites, in this the parasite spends its entire life cycle as a parasite and dies if out of their host's body. For example, Antimiba histolytica, Sarcoptes scabi, Plasmodium, Trypanosoma and in case of plants, Cascuta, Cystenchi and Striga. Let us study the examples one by one. In case of Glochidium larva, of Unio, freshwater mussel undergoes metamorphosis as an ectoparasite on the freshwater fish. Glochidia are formed inside the enlarged water tubes of gills called marsupia of female Unio. These are released along with outgoing water current through excellent siphon. Glochidia settle at bottom with their valves open and byssus thread vibrating in water. When byssus thread comes in contact with a freshwater fish, it adheres to, to it firstly by its byssus thread and later by hooks. Finally, it gets buried below the skin and undergoes metamorphic changes for several weeks to become young muscle which is finally released. Similarly, only adult stage of hookworms and Silostoma duodenale is parasite of duodenum of man. Leeches, Hirdinaria, bedbug cymex, mosquitoes, anaphylis, culex, eddies, sand flies, flabotamus, ZZ fly, glossina, all are called intermittent parasites. These visit man only for sucking their blood. In some cases, certain parasites leave their host only for specific activity. For example, Bufilus, the cattle tick, leave their host only for egg laying. Lice also leave their host for molting and egg laying. 
in case of permanent or hollow parasites some permanent parasites live inside their host's body throughout their own life period and send their progeny as cysts example of which is parasitic protozoan like antimyba histolytica balantidium coli giardia intestinalis parasitic roundworms like scaris lumbricoides fasciola hepatica tinea solium etc release capsules to outside to continue the race some permanent parasites continue to live generation after generation on the same host for example sarcoptis scabi it is a scale mite and pediculus humanus the human head louse so such parasites show monogenetic life cycle as they have only one host some permanent parasites show digenetic or the two host or sometime it is trigenetic that means three host life cycle out of which one host in which sexual phase of parasite is present is called the primary host while the other host or hosts are called intermediate or the secondary host if the intermediate host spreads the parasites from one host to another primary host then it is called vector or the carrier host for example plasmodium is a digenetic malarial parasitic protozoan and in this case vector is mosquito similarly vucereria the filarial worm causing elephantiasis and trypanosoma causing african sleeping sickness leish mania causing kala azar are also digenetic and permanent parasites permanent parasitism or the holoparasitism is also found in certain plants these plants are e chlorophyllous and draw their nutrition from their host by sending hostoria into the host's body which make connections with the xylem as well as phloem to get nutrition and water cascuta commonly called as amarbel or dodder plant is a total stem parasite of zizifus acacia and durenta on other hand Cystenti and Striga are the total root parasites of members of Solanaceae and Cruciferi. Other examples of total root parasites are Balanophora and Rafflesia. Some parasitic plants are partial parasites or the hemiparasites in plants also. These are chlorophyllous, so are autotrophic. but derive water and minerals from the xylem of the host plant by giving hostaria for example viscum celto and loranthus are the partial stem parasite while centellum album is a partial root parasite on the basis of host parasite intimacy parasites are divided into two categories facultative parasites and obligatory parasites in case of facultative parasites these become parasitic only when in association with the host otherwise these lead to free life so they become parasite if opportunity extended to them for example oyster prawn which get parasitized by ticks known as seculina which can survive on variety of hosts whichever is available second category is of obligatory parasites these lead only parasitic life and are host specific for example most of flatworms tapeworms roundworms bacteria and protozoans so we can say the obligatory 
parasites must lead parasitic life or perish on the basis of the location of the parasites or the habitat of the parasites the parasitism is of two types one is ectoparasitism and the parasite is known as ectoparasite other is endoparasitism and the parasite is known as endoparasite in case of ectoparasitism the parasites live outside the host body so also called as external parasites there are so many examples like lice ticks and certain mites in case of endoparasitism the parasites live inside the body of the host so these are called internal parasites on the basis of their position inside the host endoparasites are divided into four categories cytozoic endoparasite these live inside the specific body cell of the host these are commonly found in some bacteria all viruses and some protozoans for example plasmodium the malarial parasite lives inside the hepatocytes and rbcs of the man in same way polio virus lives in the motor neurons of the man and causes polio next category is histozoic endoparasites these infect the body tissue of the host for example raccoon plus the guinea worm in the subcutaneous tissue and causes guinea worm disease third category is gut endoparasite these are found in some part of the alimentary canal for example giardia intestinalis grand old man of intestine found in the human intestine and causes giardiasis characterized by the diarrhea very common example is of entamoeba histolytica in the small intestine of man and causes amoebic dysentery the fourth category is of body fluid parasites these live in a certain body fluid of the host for example trypanosoma in the cerebrospinal fluid of the man and causes sleeping sickness butcheria the filarial worm lives in the lymph vessels of the man and causes elephantiasis schistostoma blood fluid found in the blood of the man and causes schistostomiasis taxonomically the parasites are divided into five categories first is zoophagous parasites these are the parasites of animals main parasites of the man are protozoans bacterial pathogens fungal pathogens and viral pathogens second category is of phytophagous parasites these are either ecto or endoparasites of plants they may be bacterial pathogens fungal pathogens animal pathogens and viral pathogens third category is of social parasites social parasitism is another interesting kind of parasitism in which the social organization of one species is exploited by another species for some benefit the edinemis scolopacea commonly known as quail does not prepare its own nest and female lays its eggs in the crow's nest leaving the eggs and young ones to the care of foster parents which incubate and rear them similar kind of behavior is observed in molothrus alter commonly known as cowbird this is also called brood parasitism and is most developed in birds about 1% of all bird species are brood parasites about half of the species of cuckoos two genera of finches five cowbirds and duck in these cases the eggs of the parasite match quite closely the color and marking of the eggs of the preferred host queen ant or bee of certain species enters the nest of another ant or bee 
kills the original queen and become the queen of that colony. Certain beetles and wasps live in a colonies of social insects and derive food and shelter from the colony. Eggs of the catfish, Cynodontis multipunctatus, are incubated in the mouths of some cichlid fishes together with its own eggs. As they develop, they feed upon the fry of the host while still in the mouth. The fourth category is of sexual parasitism or the sexual parasites. It is also a special kind in which male or female become a parasite on other sex. For example, male cystosoma, commonly known as blood fluke, carries the female fluke permanently in the gynecophoral canal formed on its ventral side. Another example is of female bonelia, which carries the minute male in its uterus. Male is completely dependent on female for food and shelter. An other interesting example is of female deep sea anglerfish. Photocorinus spiniceps carries the male fish attached on head or side body. Male gets entire nourishment from her blood supply, so establishing a physiological connection with the female. The next negative Next is hyperparasitism. Hyperparasite is a special kind in which a parasite further parasitized by another parasite. So there is a parasite which will be parasitized by another parasite. So there are so many examples. The one example is of Nozema notabilis. This is a sporozone and which is an obligatory parasite of Spherospora polymorpha, which is a protozoan, which in turn a parasite of urinary bladder of toadfish. So Spherospora lives in the urinary bladder of toadfish, which is a parasite of toadfish. This protozoan is further parasitized by the sporozoan which is named as Nosema notabilis. Another example is of Pesturella pestis. It is a bacterium and it is an endoparasite of rat flea. So rat flea is where it will be present. It is present on the rat. It is an ectoparasite. Rat flea is the ectoparasite of rat, which is further parasitized by the Pesturella pestis. A very important thing is that in exploitation, there is a one-sided relationship exists between the two species, where one species exploits the other for its benefit. In other words, one organism enjoys the labor of another without paying any compensation to the host. And this exploitation is of two types, predation and parasitism. But there is a difference between two types of exploitation. Alton says that the predator is said to live on capital, whereas the parasite live on interest. Predation differs from parasitism as predator is generally larger in size than the prey, sometimes small predators act in unison to attack a large sized prey. For example, a group of wolves attacking the musk ox. Predator has less biotic potential than a parasite. So the population size of predator is less than that of the prey, while the parasites outnumber their host. Predator is less specialized in its structure than a parasite. Predator is less prey specific while the parasite is more host specific. A predator outrightly kills a prey while the parasite keeps feeding on a living host. So a predator lives on the capital while the parasite on the income. Though both are similar in some ways, like interspecific interactions 
in which one species is benefited while the other species is harmed and it involve food exploitation both regulating population size one more interesting type of interaction is parasitoidism it is a type of an interspecific interaction in which which is intermediate between parasitism and predation in this the organisms called parasitoids are insects with peculiar egg-laying behavior of the adult female and subsequent developmental behavior of the larvae parasitoids belong mainly to the order hymenoptera the wasps and diptera flies these are free living as adults but lay their eggs in or on other insect larvae the larvae of parasitoids develop in or on the larvae and almost totally consume the host so killing them before or during the pupal stage the adult parasitoid emerges out of host pupa and live a free life prince in 1980 estimated that parasitoids account for about 25% of the world's species parasitoids are typically monophagous so are typically specialized for their diet as parasitoids are organisms that cause the host to die as a result of parasitism thus the interaction between the parasitoid and the host is fundamentally different than two parasites and their host and shares some characteristic of predation there are so many examples one is of trichogramma species include the ex parasitoids of cabbage moth memestra brassicae it is the most widely used parasitoid in biological control to control various moth pests around the world parasitoidism has great significance as it act as natural enemy of the pest species so help in biological control of pests beddington et al in 1978 confirmed the reduction in host abundance in a number of parasitoid host field as well as laboratory studies heads and lawton in 1983 confirmed it by their studies on the control of holy leaf miner phytomeza illicis a small fly by the larval parasitoid chrysocaris gamma the last type of interaction is the neutralism here more than one species mainly those of animals live together in an ecosystem performing their life cycles without taking or giving any help or harm to each other in neutralism each species population remain an integral part of the community within the ecosystem in a very stable manner neither these co-dwellers expect anything from each other nor they harm each other a very important so this is all about the population interactions and in the next session we will discuss that how different questions may be framed from this chapter till then goodbye thank you